Welcome to our Rescues podcast, where we discuss the present, the past, and maybe the future of North Africa and the Sahel region. My name is Areski Daoud, and I am Principal Analyst at Mea Risk LLC, and I'm also the founder and editor of the North Africa Journal. Now join me every week for a new episode that addresses the root causes of instability in the region and beyond, and let's see if we can find solutions to complex crises. Welcome again. Hello, today I am in the Sidi Boussaid district of the Tunisian capital Tunis, a upper scale neighborhood uh, dotted with beautiful villas, uh, beautiful homes uh, overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. As you can see behind me, it takes about 50 minutes to reach Tunis from the Italian capital Rome, and so there is clearly a European feel here, even though linguistically Tunisia is probably. Uh, I would guess, the most Arabized country in the Maghreb region of North Africa. Uh, in Sidi Bou Said, things seem normal until the owners of the apartment that I rented, a visibly uh, wealthy Tunisian uh, person, apologized for not supplying milk and other commodities which she could not find in local markets. Now, the shortage of milk in Tunisia is pretty widespread. I've uh, been driving around and I saw that. And it's symptomatic of a nation whose leaders face major difficulties in bringing forward political stability and economic growth for the time being. Blame the Russian war in Ukraine as you wish, or as much as you want, that does not absolve the country's political and governance system of any wrongdoing. Now, political leaders here uh, are often, in fact, always reminded over and over again that the cost of milk production specifically is higher than the prices imposed through price control and regulation. The government uh, decides what price to impose on milk and other commodities in an effort to prevent social unrest. On the shelves of supermarkets, each customer is only allowed two units of milk. A unit consists of one liter, but the shortages have gone beyond milk, affecting many foodstuffs, such as white sugar, coffee, rice, butter, and even soft drinks and bottled mineral water. Most of these products are sold in limited quantities. Once a thriving business, cattle breeding is now in big trouble. Cows are no longer looking healthy uh, in most cases, and animals with protruding bones produce half the milk they did a few months ago, forcing many breeders and owners to look for ways to sell them. The breeders have been essentially struggling with the rise in the world price of animal feed based on imported corn and soybeans, an increase that has often reached uh, 30 to 40 percent this year due to the war in Ukraine, a major grain producer. As a result, the livestock population in Tunisia fell by 20 to 30 percent in recent months. As I stated a moment ago, the selling price of milk in Tunisia is set by, by state, which partly subsidizes the sector to support consumers, but in recent years, the cost of production has been much higher at an estimated of uh, 1.35 dinars versus an estimated cost of 1.8 dinars, that is the cost of producing that milk. Obviously, if you are a milk producer, then you are losing money and so many farmers, if not most, are working at, at a loss. The risk of the sector collapsing is just one example of structural dysfunctions of the Tunisian economy as evidenced by the shortages of recent weeks. Many are due to problems in importing certain products, while Tunisia clearly lacks the budget 
and foreign exchange to cope with global increases in, in food prices, a consequence, as we stated before, of the war in Ukraine. Beside Russia's war on Ukraine, economic management has been a big problem for Tunisia, essentially highlighting the lack of skills and consensus on how to solve these complex economic problems. Now take the example of white sugar, which is mostly purchased abroad. The product has not been seen in markets for several weeks. The Trade Office of Tunisia, OCT, responsible for its import, justified the disruption by evoking the cancellation of a contract by one of its suppliers, without mentioning payment problems. Tunisia ordered, at the beginning of September of this year, 47,000 tons of sugar to secure its stocks, and 20,000 tons have already been flowing in from Algeria. But experts will tell you that authorities have essentially failed to set up a strategic stock of sugar and other food products and have been facing dwindling financial resources. Before the summer, the question of cereal imports had also posed a, a, a problem for the state's finances and the cereal office has had to seek help from donors such as the World Bank to secure its stocks. While the authorities are struggling to keep supplies going, the political leaders have been doing what politicians do best and that is to blame others. President Qais Sayed has said many, many, many times uh, it is the speculators, quote unquote, the speculators to blame without providing any clear, tangible uh, evidence of that. Now, some analysts, however, do insist that the war in Ukraine has indeed been used by individuals and businesses to speculate on products and markets, creating disruptions to their benefit. In the face of growing speculative practices, the authorities have been powerless, paving the way for more price hikes, higher inflation and anger among the population. Still, the Tunisian people remain patient and have not engaged in any visible social unrest at this time. This is largely because, let's be, let's be clear about this, President Sayed remains highly popular. Many even believe that the shortages have been engineered by lobby groups that are looking to hurt the president's popularity. Regardless, Tunisia is still an extremely interesting experimentation, and I encourage the country's friends and partners to increase their support and help to Tunisia to stabilize it. A healthy Tunisia can always be used as a model for the rest of the Arab world. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. To subscribe to our podcast series, please visit mea-risk.com slash audio. That is mea-risk.com slash audio to find out more. If you are interested in a six-month trial for our critical incident awareness and notification system, please visit shield-alert.com. That is shield-alert.com. Until our next podcast, thank you and goodbye.